Hello. Uh, so I hope that we'll be able to uh, be a wake up after such a wonderful lunch for for a while. And I would like to uh, tell you something about the CLI tools. Um, my name is uh, Martin, and I'm, I work for Red Hat on uh, the Foreman project. I'm with Foreman for about eight years, and for the time I uh, focus uh, mostly on uh, CLI tools uh, in in the stack. It was mainly Hammer CLI and Installer, and now Foreman maintain. Uh, when I was trying to figure out what I'll I'll want to share with you on on this uh, conference. Uh, I uh, remember that there are quite a lot of questions on, on our channels on how to do something with Hammer. And sometimes the Hammer is, is not the right tool for the task that the people wanted to achieve. So uh, it came to my mind that I'll do overview of various tools that we have for CLI integration in Foreman. And I will sum up uh, uh, pros and cons of, of each, each of them, and probably uh, talk a bit about what are the uh, ideal use cases for, for such tools. <coughs> so uh, I've prepared quite a lot of content, and I'm not sure if we make it in, in our slot, so I'll have to skip something. Uh, so, firstly, I'll go through the options that we have to integrate with CLI, and then I'll dive more deep into each of them and uh, do some demos and live examples. And uh, then we can talk about some troubleshooting and what, what new is there in, in Foreman currently. So, uh, for me to better skip the things, I would like to uh, know how uh, experienced you are with, with the different tools. So please raise your hand who is active uh, for main user. Okay, and uh, is there anybody who doesn't know anything about API, who never used that or doesn't see how, how it looks like? Okay. Uh, are there uh, people who are no Hammer users? I mean, the CLI client that we have? Okay, so the majority have at least some experience with those. So, yeah, that that would be uh, quite easier for us to skip some basic stuff. <coughs> so, uh, let's let's go start. So, uh, the most natural thing to start with is our API. Uh, the Foreman API is uh, like general. Uh, ge generic API for, for the project. It's based on uh, REST, uh, REST design, but there are some deviations here and there, but we are trying to be RESTful as, as it's reasonable for us. Uh, it is important to know if you want to integrate with our API uh, that uh, it's versioned and we try to be uh, backward compatible within the version. So we don't introduce any uh, any changes that are not backward compatible. So if you found some, some such things, please report that it was not intentional. Uh, another thing that in, that's important to know is that our API is extensible with plugins. Uh, for the integ integration, it means that uh, some endpoints can disappear out of the sudden. If you disable plugin on the server, uh, part of the API may disappear. And your uh, client applications should be ready for that if you, if you decide to support such, such scenario. And uh, the last important thing is that we try to be on par with uh, UI in our API. So usually if you are missing some functionality in the API that is present in UI, uh, please uh, let us know, uh, file some issue or send a PR with the fix preferably, and uh, we should fix that because uh, the API should be on, on par with, with our UI. Okay, the advantages or reasons for uh, integrating with API directly is that it's uh, fast. There are no uh, 
layers above above the API, so there are no things that slows you down. Uh, it's uh, well documented. Uh, the documentation for the API is a uh, hard requirement. If you want to contribute to the API, you need to provide uh, documentation uh, because our tooling uh, heavily relies on, on the documentation. I'll, I'll tell more about that later. And uh, another plus is that it's easy to integrate with uh, from any language because it's uh, generic HTTP calls. So in every language, uh, there, is, uh, there is some library or some tools that help you uh, to send the request. <clears throat> so it's easy, easy to integrate. Uh, the cons of, of the API are, uh, for example, if you want to use it as a, a human from a directory from shell, it's quite difficult to craft the curl options. I've always uh, the terminal line too short to fit everything in, so <clears throat> it's it's not easy. And you have to parse the JSON to get some uh, reasonable information from that. So it's it's not that very easy if, if you are a person. Uh, and yeah, the, the API follows to some extent uh, the internal model of, of Foreman. Uh, so sometimes things are quite complex to achieve. So you need to know where to go if you if you need some certain things. <coughs> okay. So next, what we have an, another tool that we can use to integrate uh, is uh, API Pi bindings. Uh, as we talked about uh, the API, <coughs> it's uh, useful if you want to do some, or I would use that for uh, some one-time one requests to, to Foreman. If I would like to develop some client, I would probably create some layer above the API that will uh, make it more, uh, more native for the language that I'm trying to develop the client in. And that's the case for API uh, Pi bindings, which is a wrapper for the AP, for an API in Ruby. Uh, it is quite simple and small library. It is uh, static uh, in the mean that it doesn't change with the API changes. It loads the description of the API from server and uh, lets you do some introspection and call the calls based on the description from the server. So in, in general, we are not doing many changes in the API Pi bindings. It's, it's quite uh, quite stable project and it, change, it changes very rarely. Uh, it uh, can provide you also, for example, from interactive uh, Ruby, uh, it can provide you some introspection tools where you can uh, go through the resources and see their uh, actions and parameters and descriptions of that. So <clears throat> it might be useful if you want to discover the, uh, the API. The advantages are it's uh, easy to integrate with Ruby. Uh, it's uh, well tested because uh, uh, Hammer is based on API Pi bindings, so we use that heavily with our uh, users and customers. <coughs> it helps you uh, because our API endpoints usually have uh, multiple routes to follow, and uh, those differ based on the parameters you want to call uh, the API with. So the API Pi bindings finds the most uh, useful route for you for that specific endpoint. Uh, so it makes things easier to call, and also it includes uh, logging. So your Ruby application can <coughs> uh, easy log uh, all the traffic that comes uh, in and out, and it makes later debug debugging and troubleshooting easier. Okay, so another tool, uh, isn't that too quick for you? Are you able to follow? It's okay. Okay, 
So uh, another tool, and it's probably most used tool in uh, in CLI integration is uh, Hammer, <coughs> and that's that's command line client for uh, for for men. Uh, it should provide the same functionality as UI from CLI, so we are trying to be on on par with with our uh, UI. Uh, the advantage of of using Hammer is that it's uh, uh, human user friendly, so we add some additional functionality to uh, to make it easier easier to consume the API. Uh, one of the most used features uh, is the translation of the names to IDs because uh, our uh, API endpoints accepts only IDs of resources, um, and that's usually not very convenient to provide the IDs directly. So with Hammer, you can uh, provide the names of the resources, and you don't have to remember the IDs. <coughs> uh, the Hammer CLI is also extensible with plugins. So usually, every uh, plugin that extends the API in Foreman has also a plugin for Hammer that extends the Hammer functionality. <clears throat> uh, Hammer also, to make it more user-friendly, it uh, provides some uh, parsing of the output, so you can format the uh, responses from, from the foreman uh, for your needs. And it's accompanied with uh, help that is getting better and better, so you can uh, get some uh, interesting information in that, and we are trying to extend uh, our help to uh, help users to uh, find the, the new things that we are implementing there. And we are also trying to uh, follow the discussions on, on our channels and uh, try to make the experience better. So there, there were recently <coughs> quite some interesting changes in, in the help, and I'll also show you that. Uh, another advantage is that uh, Hammer is uh, pretty much configurable. Uh, so uh, all the parameters you, you are sending to the CLI, you can also have in, in some uh, configuration file, so you can simplify uh, your Hammer invocations quite a lot. Uh, for example, I uh, I use uh, Hammer for multiple form and instances, so I have separate configurations for each of them and can easily just uh, use uh, Hammer-C and the name of the configuration file to switch Hammer to different server and uh, perform my queries against uh, different different server. Uh, all these advantages bro, uh, bring with themselves one disadvantage, and that is uh, that it's quite slow to load Hammer into memory because it needs to do a lot of things, and uh, that takes time. So if, if you are doing some uh, population of uh, fresh instance where you need to create, I don't know, thousands of resources, it might be slow to um, load the uh, whole Hammer environment for each of them. Okay, and there are a few new tools or uh, tools that can help you with some more specific tasks. And first of them is uh, GraphQL. <coughs> GraphQL is quite recent addition to, uh, to Foreman. Uh, it's uh, it's a query language for uh, the data that are in Foreman, and it's quite powerful language to describe the data set that you are getting back. So if you need to uh, fetch some more complex data, and it would take uh, many API calls uh, to extract them from Foreman, you can achieve the same with uh, one GraphQL query. 
uh, as I said, this is uh, quite a new new code that was uh, that addition was driven by Timo's team, and uh, <coughs> I'm not sure how much it was adopted by other users, but it it's it's really exciting feature, and I'm uh, looking forward to see uh, how it proves in production. It definitely has a lot of, lots of uh, potential. <clears throat> some some people would like to see it to be API v3 for for men. Uh, some people would like to uh, build uh, our UI on top of that because uh, it's it's uh, I, I've. I've heard that uh, it's easy to integrate with uh, a GraphQL endpoint, uh, for example, from React or some JavaScript-driven clients. So it's it's quite interesting addition, and um, I would like to see how how it will evolve in the future. <coughs> the advantage of this uh, thing is that uh, has handy introspection of of the resources that it offers, and uh, it's pretty flexible in how you can define the output of, of the call. And it also comes with a great console in, in the UI, where you can test your queries and use the introspection in there. I'll, I'll show that in the demo. Uh, the disadvantage of this is it's uh, quite young, so we don't know yet how that will evolve in the future. And I'm not aware of any mutations, <clears throat> so you cannot change data. Uh, you can only read data from foreman, so I'm, I'm not sure how, how this uh, progressed, if, if, there are on, if there are any mutations yet, but uh, last time I checked, there were no any. And also, we don't have much uh, feedback on performance, especially with complex queries. So that that might be also thing that uh, might affect adoption with with uh, your uh, integration. But I think that's definitely something worth trying, and it offers new possibilities of uh, querying the form and data. Okay, uh, another tool that's sometimes pretty useful if you want to get data from foreman are uh, report templates. It's also a quite recent addition, and uh, it was demoed quite a lot of, lot of time on uh, foreman demos. Uh, I can uh, recommend uh, demo number uh, 68 that was few weeks ago, uh, where, was, where were demoed the new additions to this feature, and uh, there is uh, the whole workflow covered in details. So if you are interested in that, please find, find this demo on YouTube and, and watch that. It's, it's pretty, pretty well covering uh, all the feature. In, in general, the report templates are templates uh, as other template, uh, template kinds in Foreman. Uh, so you can use IRB, you can use uh, the macros in there, you have direct direct access to the data in uh, in Foreman through the through the model, and uh, you can format the output however you want. Uh, you can pro uh, you can create CSV reports from that. You can create whatever you want. You can create even XML if you if you wish. There are some useful macros that uh, make the things easier, and uh, and also it has the feature that the other template templates has. So you can generate the template uh, directly, or you can schedule it. You can let it deliver it to your email. So if you want to, for example, create some report for your uh, hosts. Uh, let's say every week, and there are some reports, for example, for uh, subscriptions or uh, for uh, how how your hosts are up to date if there are any erratas uh, not installed for for your hosts you can let uh, foreman create these reports uh, on weekly basis and send it 
to your email. So it's it's pretty useful, especially if you want to gather some complex data that wouldn't be that easy with uh, API directly. We provide some predefined predefined reports that you can uh, close and uh, modif uh, clone and modify, or you can create uh, completely your own set of reports that that you that you would use. Yeah, as I said, it's it's a great tool for complex reports. Uh, you have a lot of freedom with how you format your data. So if if you consume this with some other tooling in your in your flow, uh, <coughs> you can modify the data as, as you wish. Yeah, the disadvantages are that if you uh, are creating the report. Uh, you need to use the macros or the data that are available in the protected environment. It's, it's similar to other uh, templates that we have, but in the reports you might hit quite often uh, the barrier where some data are not included in, in the protected environment. Uh, so usually there is a patch to foreman or catalog involved, that uh, will enable accessing the data in the protected environment. That's that's a pain, but I think that as uh, using of this feature will grow, it will be uh, hit less and less because the needed needed information will be provided. We are preparing documentation for the available macros and uh, data that you can use in the in the templates, uh, but I'm not sure where. The, when this is this will be merged and released, uh, maybe 125 or 126. So we will see. Also, a disadvantage might be that uh, if you want to create the report, you need to create the report itself first. I mean the template, and then you set sets the data for you. Uh, the Modules uh, can be found on on this address. It's uh, it's the foreman part of the, the foreman organization on GitHub, and it's uh, actively being worked on currently. Uh, it has quite great documentation. I, I checked yesterday, and uh, everything is well described. And there there are examples how to how to uh, use those. Um, those uh, roles or uh, tasks. So, if you are interested in this kind of integration, uh, ch check that. That's that's really useful. Uh, last thing that I would like to mention, or last tool that I want to mention, is form and maintain. Uh, it's quite different kind of uh, tool for accessing form and and it's more a tool for uh, administration of uh, of the server itself. Uh, the purpose of this tool is uh, originally to drive uh, the upgrades from one version to another, though I have to admit that currently most attention was given to satellite and the upgrades in upstream are not supported yet. Uh, that's currently the priority for uh, for the team, and we would like to introduce the upgrades for Foreman and Foreman with Catalo, even on Debian. Uh, but yeah, there are some challenges. So this is actively being uh, developed, and we will see when we will be, be able to introduce. But I hope it will be soon. Other than that, we have a uh, backup and restore feature, which is quite useful, uh, especially if you use, for example, remote databases on your setup. Uh, it might be, it might be something uh, you want to try. Uh, we also have service command that can uh, do the handling of uh, services of all the related components. Uh, as, uh, for example, if you have, if you use Foreman with uh, Catalo. You need also uh, candle pin and pulp, and there are a lot of services that needs to be restarted in correct order. So, for main maintenance service is uh, 
the tool for that. Yeah, and another another thing that we would like to focus on is to move uh, the tooling that we have spread across the whole code base. There are various rake, rake tasks and uh, uh, standalone scripts that helps you, uh, for example, to uh, clean up uh, formant tasks or set some set some uh, features of of formant. So I would like to see those being wrapped to some extent in form and maintain. So we have one tool for all these administration tasks that you can refer to uh, that would be equipped with, like, equipped with help that you can um, check and see what are the parameters and you don't have to look uh, in some various directories or some scripts lift. So this is this is something that I would like to uh, introduce to form and maintain too. So this was uh, this was the overview of the tools that we have, and <clears throat> now I would like to uh, switch back and uh, go through some some of them in in more detail and show how how they work or how they use them. Uh, okay, so form an API. Yeah, in, in the API, I would like to mention the documentation. Uh, this is pretty important to know where you can find it because if you want to use the API, you obviously need to know what the parameters are and what the roads are. So the documentation, there is official build of the documentation that is built only for for men without plugins and that can be found on on the foreman.org site and we build it for every release so uh, I can switch to that and it looks like this uh, this also shows the structure of, of the API so we have some resources <coughs> that are usually known to if you use for men and every resource has some action, and each of the actions has a list of uh, parameters that you can use. These are listed in here. And also there are uh, some descriptions, uh, and also there are described the validations, and usually we have some examples included. Uh, this is... Uh, this documentation is available for each uh, API endpoint, so you can refer to that. Uh, the documentation is also lo localized, and that's mainly because we are uh, using that to generate uh, CLI options in Hammer. So uh, if you contribute in tr translations for the API documentation, you can be sure that your work will be also affecting users uh, that are using Hammer and using uh, your localization. Uh, the documentation is also accessible on your foreman locally, and it's uh, on a URL slash epidoc. And this documentation is a special in that, that it includes your plugins. So it shows uh, the full API in the state that is uh, current on your server. It's, it's a useful reference and you don't need uh, to authenticate uh, to look in the documentation. We also can provide the documentation in the JSON format, which is consumed by the API Pi bindings and Hammer. Okay, so this is example of how we can call the API from uh, command line directly using curl. So here I am. Uh, here I am uh, trying to uh, list architectures uh, on on my uh, development server. 
So uh, I can execute that. And uh, okay. And you can see how the response looks like. This is the typical response for uh, list type requests. So at the beginning, there are some metadata that are telling you how, how many results you get and the, the, there is pagination on. So uh, if, if you're building uh, some automation, you can check this data to see if, if the set of results was complete or not. And there are the actual results uh, in here. I think that that was enough for for the API. It's very similar if if you use put and post calls. So I would ref refer you to the documentation and uh, follow this uh, example if you want to give it a try. <coughs> okay. So for uh, the bindings, uh, I have uh, I have more uh, more examples. Uh, so I'll, I'll run uh, different Ruby scripts, <coughs> and each of them I will use uh, the connection to the API. Uh, the, the connection is here. This is how you create connection through API Pi bindings. You just provide some uh, credentials and the server URL. They, there is much more information that you can provide to, for example, choose different authentication models. But this is the bare minimum how you can connect to the to the server. Uh, I'm storing that in in a file that I will require in in the following scripts, so we don't have to repeat that everywhere. So I'll run that and uh, store it in the files, and uh, we can see if we are able to connect. So if I'll execute the script, we can see it returned uh, the object that uh, represents the connection to the API. So at, at, this, at this point, uh, the uh, API bindings are ready to uh, perform some requests to the API, uh, but it didn't load it to the description yet. It will be done uh, during the first attempt to access the, the API. The description is about one megabyte, so it's quite a lot of data, and it's being cached. So if, if we find uh, cache with the data, we use, we use the cache. You can see it in, in the content of, of the object that there are the links where, where it is available. OK, so I'll show you how to do the introspection with the bindings. So as we have seen in the documentation, the API has resources, and we can list the resources from the, from the bindings. So on the connection object, we, we can call resources method, and it will return us a list of resources. I limited it to 10 so that it fits into the slide, but you, you, get, uh, you get what I mean. So each of the resources can list uh, its actions, so I picked uh, architectures. That's my favorite resource to bully. So I will show it on, on that. And if I execute it, uh, you can see that we have uh, five actions. And that's, that's uh, the most basic CRUD uh, uh, operations on, on the resource. And we can call the actions, actually. So if you use resource action, call, uh, you can query the API and you get the reply. We've seen that before when we use the API directly from from uh, command line. Okay, so to not to be that verbose, there are some shortcuts. So these all notations are equivalent. And you can also append the parameters for the call. I'll show that in, in a second. Okay, to uh, inspect the parameters, you can list the parameters for the action. So now we are uh, listing parameters for update action or on architectures. And you can see there are uh, four. 
and the last one is a hash, which also has uh, like nested attributes. So we can go on deeper and uh, run that as well. So the hash has two keys, one is name and one is uh, operating system IDs. Okay, so now we try to update the parameters. So you can see that we put together hash with parameters. We will try to update uh, architecture with ID2 and we'll provide it with the new name and we change it to i4i6 and the call is uh, on the last line. So if I execute that, it will uh, trigger the endpoint on our API and returns back the result. So we can see the name was set correctly and yeah, okay, I can, I can change it to something else so that we can see that it was actually updated. Okay, now it's, now it's correct. So you can see that the name was changed to i586 and the updated at is uh, current, current time, which shows that we are quite slow. Okay, so we should speed up to cover more things. Um, yeah, there are some alternatives. Uh, the bindings for Python, uh, the APYPy, it's uh, basically the same library. It's just translation to Python, so it has very similar approach. And Nailgun has different approach, but it's also for for Python, and uh, this is tool developed uh, by our quality engineers for easier uh, CLI testing. So you can check on both, which one will suit your needs better. Okay, so now Hammer CLI. Yeah, I'll probably skip these generic slides on how the commands are structured. This is just only good to mention that uh, there are some global options just after the hammer that are affecting the execution of, of the CLI, and there are another options after the command that are specific for the individual commands. So that's, that's something that's not very common in other CLI tools, so I'd like to stress that out. Okay, we can see uh, how, how it works. Uh, yeah, we have uh, we have uh, help that will describe what you can have there. So if you want to uh, do some inspection of what Hammer provides, uh, use the help, it will, it will uh, guide you. Okay, I'll skip the configuration, that's quite obvious. Yeah, the out methods. So the number of uh, available out methods is growing. The most used is basic out with uh, sessions or without. You just provide uh, username and password. Um, we have, that's not, not well known, but we have also access token, which you can generate for the user and you can use the token uh, instead of the password. The advantage is that you can revoke the token, so there is less risk if you provide the password, for example, to some cron jobs that uh, that you'll have to change uh, your uh, password if something wrong happens. Uh, currently, we, we've added support for open ID connect type of authentication. We have uh, two-factor and uh, username and password based. And we've done integration with uh, Keycloak server, which is one of uh, open ID connect uh, providers. Yeah, I was able to set up also client certificate authentication, but it requires some changes in server uh, Apache configuration, and that's getting lost after the updates. So if you want to go this way, you will have to probably handle the upgrades on your own and uh, put it back after the, our installer will fix it. So, yeah, but it was, I, I was able to uh, authenticate this client certificate uh, either 
to single foreman or foreman with cattle. So this is also possible. Yeah, okay, here, here we uh, can see how the access token is used. So I've created one token for user admin that is called demo, and uh, I, I used the token as a password. So here we can see that it works. Okay, so there is uh, some. There are some ways how you can uh, tune the output uh, on, on Hammer. Uh, so the most important is the dash dash output, where you can change. Are we on time to finish? Oh, can we can we finish this slide? This is most important. So. Yeah, so you can specify the output, and. Uh, also, for example, for a CSV, you can turn off the headers, so you have just the plain data. Uh, and there are some important things uh, that we've added recently, and that's the dash dash fields, uh, <coughs> which uh, where you can specify individual fields that you can describe. So uh, you don't, you no longer have to. I show all the data that are returned from the list command, but you can select individual items. You can, for example, choose just IDs, and that will make you easier to iterate, for example, in, in some for loop if you want to do some uh, bulk, uh, bulk changes. So uh, in the help of, of the list command, you can see similar tables. This is for hosts, and there is in in uh, the first column, there are available fields. And uh, in the other columns, where there is X, uh, those fields are included in the group that is in the header. So for example, for hosts, we by default show uh, the columns that are marked by X. Uh, and there, there is also a group that is called thin, where we have just the ID and name. So if you use your command with uh, dash dash fields, uh, you can use, for example, the group, which is in upcase, and then you can list the individual uh, columns, and that will format your output. So I'll show that, and I'll probably end out and leave some room for questions. OK. So you can see here that we have just uh, uh, what's in thin, that's ID and name, then organization with its uh, sub-attributes, and uh, IP address. We've limited the response to just two, uh, two rows to fit on the slides, but you can see how it works. So should we now finish, or? Yeah. I, I'd say five minutes. Okay, so I'll go on and we'll see where we, where we get. Yeah, so search is also uh, useful if you want to um, uh, sort or select specifically your, your fields. Uh, this is uh, common for all list, uh, list commands in Hammer. And uh, the syntax for the search is the same what's in the scoped search in the UI. So if, you, uh, if we switch to, to the UI, uh, I can uh, test my query in here, and uh, there is some uh, completion, so it will help you to create a query. You can test it in the UI, and then you can copy paste it and put it uh, into the search field, and it will filter the results for you. So this is uh, quite useful. Okay, so we have some examples. So here I am listing hosts by IP. So if I execute that, uh, I will get just just the one host with the IP. Okay, so what's next? Yeah, taxonomies. That's that's pain point. In some recent version, we uh, turned it on by default, and it brought some confusion. Um, so to explain, in each API endpoint, there are uh, attributes organization ID and uh, location ID. Uh, try to think of these attributes as uh, the scope selector for the task. It's 
very similar to what we have in the UI uh, in, at the top in here. So even if the resources are not uh, taxable, are not uh, assigned to any organization and location, uh, the execution of the query is uh, done in, uh, in this scope. So what you have set in here, that's the same uh, what you set in uh, Hammer CLI in the organization ID and location ID. That, that might be confusing because we've added everywhere and some resources are not taxable. So it doesn't make sense there. But there might be some subtasks to the, to the API request that will require the scopes to have set. So Okay, and the troubleshooting uh, for for close. Uh, if you if you want to uh, find out what's wrong with with your non-functional new hammer, try to use dash dash debug option, which will provide you very detailed output. And uh, there you can find what's going on and out in the API. So you can see if the errors you are seeing are provided by uh, the API on server, or if it's error in Hammer. Sometimes the errors from server are uh, formatted differently, so Hammer doesn't know about them and hides them, but they are in the logs. So you can size, uh, find some useful information in there. What's also uh, quite useful is that there is and that's the last thing that I'll show, I promise. And that's, that's the request, uh, request ID that's in the response headers. Uh, you can see it in here. And that's, that's uh, some ID which, which is uh, unique for the request on the API. And uh, with the beginning of the ID, which is, uh, which is in here, uh, every log on the server is uh, marked. So you can filter just the logs for your request, which is useful if you have multiple requests on the server going on. The logs are like merged together and it's not easy to find out what belongs to what request. So this, uh, this number can help you. Uh, I can show that if I uh, call some request and I'll grab this uh, information from the debug output. Um, So you grab that, I'll print what we have. So that's our request uh, ID, or at the beginning of that. I can connect to the server and grab the logs from the server and print them. So this SSH uh, will connect to my server. It will grab the logs of the server and it will find the ID of the of the request in the logs. So I, I have now clean output of what's going on uh, in, the, in the request. It's, it's not complete because some of the lines are like multi-line and, and the number is only on the first line, but if you connect to the server and watch the log manually, you can easily set, see what, what belongs to the line. And that's it, I think that's, that's enough for today. Thank you. Maybe one question, if there's one. So thank you very much for your talk. Um, one question, um, Hammer is sometimes a little bit slow. Is there something going on to improve that? Yeah, we always try to improve that. We've done a lot of refactorings and uh, trying to find out the bottlenecks. But uh, also parallel to this, there are some requests to make it even more complex. So that slows us down a bit. So one thing that you can use is uh, the shell in, uh, in Hammer command. There is Hammer shell. and uh, it will put you into an environment where you can just run the individual commands and you don't have to load the environment again, again and again. So that for some use cases it might be useful. Uh, 
I, at the moment, I don't see much room to improve the speed because we need to, uh, with every start of hammer, due to its dynamic, uh, dynamic nature, we need to parse the JSON of all the descriptions of the API at each, at each uh, start of, of the tool. So that's the most time consuming thing. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea how to make it faster. So probably Can, I... Would it be possible to uh, cache these, um, these, ca um, these uh, JSON? Uh, um, we have uh, this uh, cached, but it's one megabyte of JSON. So if you, if you parse it and uh, extract this uh, data in memory, and we have to do that to like create the commands, uh, it's it's time consuming. Mm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. By the way, I'll provide the slides. They are interactive, and there is more content, so you can uh, use them. It's it's Jupyter Notebook, so if you are familiar with Jupyter, you can run Jupyter, and you can uh, run my slides, and uh, you can use the examples against your machine. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. You're welcome. Thank you.